France's love affair with nuclear power spans 40 years, but there have been ups and downs along the way, depending on the whims of political leaders. In 2018, the idea was to cut back on nuclear use. But by 2022, the same government reversed direction and now wants to extend reactor running lives and build new ones. They would have us believe that this is the path to the promised land of net zero emissions. But is there any real basis in the newfound confidence in a nuclear renaissance? There are goals that are being given, but they come from uh, large institutions like the International Energy Agency or the OECD that tell us that to meet our climate goals, we have to double or triple nuclear production by 2050. And everyone uh, is mobilized to reach the target. It's, it's challenging, but we have to work on it. In fact, it's a huge undertaking. This, this nuclear renaissance, this nuclear revival, presents three big challenges. I think the first one is pretty obvious to all, it's the finance risk. Uh, we're talking about 50 billion euros that are needed just to extend the lifetime of existing reactors. 50 additional billions for new reactors. That's massive. Where are you going to get that money? How are you going to disburse it on time? Um, I think the second big issue is labor. Uh, skilled workers, where do you find them? Because we no longer have them uh, in the needed numbers in France. How do you bring them in? How do you train them uh, so that you can meet your goals on time? That's a big problem. And I would say maybe the third one would be the big spats that we're seeing, uh, both between uh, Germany and France on nuclear issues, and that is really showing up uh, at the EU level, especially on uh, the contract for differences side, uh, CFD. Uh, but also inside, like within the country, on the domestic level, uh, between um, the government and EDF, on the ways in which uh, this nuclear rollout should happen, this nuclear renaissance should happen, and what are the best tools to put in place to make it happen on time. How serious is this problem? It's very serious because uh, it's both important for French con consumers, household and SMEs who still who want to pay their, their electricity the cheapest way possible. And it's very important for EDF because they, they have to, uh, they need a visibility on price in order to build new uh, nuclear re reactors. And France do need those re reactors. Even if they can find a way to finance the costly nuclear venture, there are still many other unpredictable and significant risks ahead. With climate change, you have two, two types of challenge. The first one being cooling, because in a hotter climate, it's harder to, to cool a plant. And the second one is uh, safety, because uh, you will have more extreme and more frequent extreme weather events, which can lead to damage to the plant or to the infrastructure it needs to, uh, to work properly. The issue is that it's very hard to, uh, to uh, forecast what the climate will be at the end of the lifespan of, uh, of a nuclear plant. It will be at the end of the century, it depends on uh, future emission. We don't know where we are going precisely. So it's hard to uh, design now a plant that will be able to work properly at the end of the century. Given all the challenges that current nuclear and new build face, is there a danger that France is going to veer off the road to carbon neutrality? On the opposite, France is a unique position because we have already decarbonized our electricity thanks to nuclear and renewable. So we're in the same position as countries like Sweden, like Switzerland or like Finland now is that we can uh, use our low carbon electricity to um, eliminate fossil fuels in cars, you know, in homes and so forth, so to electrify all these users. Yet there is a very real chance that French President Emmanuel Macron's plans to build new reactors by 2050 will not materialize. What are the consequences? The consequences of this deal going wrong are multiple. Yeah. I think the first one is that you will have to do course correction. So at the very last minute, bringing a higher uh, uh, share of uh, renewable in your mix, uh, making sure that you have broader partners, uh, partnerships sorry, uh, with, uh, say, Germany, with the rest of uh, the EU, with uh, North American partners, potentially even with Asia, and also uh, the timeline for uh, meeting your net zero targets, uh, which might shift or that you might have to readjust should uh, the, your nuclear revival still play a central role uh, in your new mix.